still the most consistent action franchise out there. Heavy part one vibes though, no spoilers. And I just have to show you what Letterboxd did when I logged my review on their site. While I have mixed feelings about the trend of splitting movies into two parts, this one does feel like it reaches a natural end with the particular MacGuffin at play here. This is a jam-packed film though that doesn't waste a second of its huge runtime, and I find that highly commendable. Everything great about the series remains, with masterful tension building, a fantastic script, and wonderful set pieces that keep things interesting and riveting. Tom Cruise gets a lot of running to do, and I'm here for it. There's something to be said about how well the series balances such heavy elements, humor, action, and plotting to create such a thrill ride. I believe in years to come, these will be the prime example of how to do a long-running action franchise and be studied for it. Whereas Fast 10 feels played out, Mission Impossible keeps finding new life. The stunts are absolutely incredible, including the big one where Cruise drives a motorcycle off a cliff with a parachute for real. However, I had already seen it so many times as it was heavily featured in the marketing trailers, including a huge behind the scenes promo. So there was a sense of been there done that while recognizing how impressive it truly is. Tom Cruise is a legend and a madman. There are some growing pains with this one. I wasn't sure how to feel about them. Occasionally, I got lost in the mountains of dialogue and exposition detailing the MacGuffin's locations and plans. They do a good job with visuals and inserts to help out, but sometimes I just needed a second to catch up or for my precious subtitles. There's also a lot of characters and a lot of setup in this one, with the villain and his entire history with Ethan and full plan obviously being saved for all the reveals in part two. So that can come across a little hollow. The villain himself is written very mysteriously and I needed a little bit more to buy into him, even though he's like morale did what he was asked to do with the material and he excels in the action. There's some beautiful character work done here, especially with Haley Outlaw's Grace who fits right in and has a completely believable story arc across the film. Other characters such as Ilsa and Luther come and go so much it's harder to pin them down with the former having very little dialogue and too much back and forth. There's a particular heavy moment that comes at about the halfway point of the movie I believe that I have mixed feelings on despite it being well done for the most part. One of my other gripes lies with the editing, specifically in a bunch of the dialogue scenes. I thought my eyes deceived me but it happened a lot in several dialogue scenes where there were jump cuts, breaking the line of action in the 180 degree rule that causes screen direction and continuity issues where it's hard to tell where the characters are in the space and where they are looking. It took me out of the film. It was sloppier than I expected from the series in that regard. There's also a lot of canted angles, more espionage level things, and a general sense that Macquarie, who still directs his socks off here, is trying to replicate more of the style of the original film. And at times, it really works. While at others, it leads to poor editing of conversational scenes. Not a complaint I expected to have in a modern Mission Impossible movie. Again, I have to hit hard on how well the actor sequences are staged, how they mix practical effects and CGI, and how tense they become. I was constantly and consistently on the edge of my seat not knowing what could happen, but it being part one, I had a general sense most things will play out okay, even though they were executed tremendously. There's one set piece that really reminds me of the game Uncharted 2, like it was ripped straight from it. As far as the main threat revolving around AI, I personally thought it was a genius move. I've seen some lauded as preposterous, but is it really? How hard is it to believe an expensive AI super weapon can be developed and go rogue with governments doing anything they can to gain control of it? It raises important and timely questions about the nature of AI and how deep fakes and technology of the like can have real life dangers and consequences. As far as how the entity thinks and operates, yes, it goes far and you suspend some disbelief. What you have to with these scenarios is upon the major degrees and dangers of which it can go, but is it that far fetched? It made me think of the film Eagle Eye, which was way ahead of its time in that regard. And I also got big vibes from Person of Interest, which was another really prophetic and fantastic TV show about AI and the wars around it that was way ahead of its time. And it's hitting a lot of those same themes here. All in all, while Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 is still an absolute thrill ride blast to watch, and while it doesn't reach the unpredictable crazy heights
highlights of Mission Impossible Fallout or some others, it's a very worthy addition to the franchise and one of the best films of the year. I can't wait to see how it all wraps up. I give Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 4.5 out of 5 stars. And just as a note, I saw this in an early access 40x screening and while cool, the novelty wore off fast and the movie just beats you up in the action scenes as the chair throttles you around, blasting air and water and moving at every constant little camera movement and everything. It becomes distracting. It was my second experience doing this, and it's just not for me. And it's expensive. For those that like it, I can see why you do. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, and remember, always look for the good.